Yo, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all the other episodes, stop by raprankings.com or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. Track three, DOA, Death of Auto Tune. <laughs> Produced by No ID. I someone really should, struggle with my should find his ID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, you can get in trouble for not having one of them. Um, so, yeah, I struggle with this a lot. I had to really decide how I felt about this record. And uh, this is the conclusion that I arrived at. Uh, seven plus. Uh, what do you got? Seven plus. Wow! Wait, no, 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 no. Don't fucking ding me. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm, I'm asking you. Seven plus. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, seven plus. I mean, we're going to discuss why, but, you know. Don't ding me. <laughs> Don't you dare ding me on DOA. <laughs> My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. Don't you don't you give people the, even the slightest impression that I would give this a seven plus, but I do give it a six minus. Wow. All right. Well, yeah, you got to do the opposite of the dang. Huh. Okay. Well, I completely understand that um, because that I was I was wondering if that was going to be it myself, but certain things propelled this record into the seven territory for me. Um, I think we're going to have a nice, friendly, wholesome (laughs) discussion. And I can't wait to respectfully (laughs) debate the merits of this song with you, my friend. Okay. (laughs) Um, So six minus is... uh, you know, I thought you said six plus. No, I didn't. But you're hearing things. You thought I said blueprint two. You I'm pretty I sure you plus. said six plus, but you, I said you gave six it a minus, six minus, just like it says on the paper. Well, then right I take here. it back because I was going to say I under I said I understood a six plus, but if it's a six minus, then I don't know. I give uh, this a six minus, uh, which means uh, it's all right. You know, it's all right. It's all right. You know, yeah, it's all right. You know, it's all right. Let's not overreact here. Let's not be reactionary. Yeah, it's like you don't you know, dislike it, but there's not enough for you to say you like it. It's like, you don't have an active dislike for it, but you don't like it. It's all right, you know? I have very conflicting feelings about this thing. I think I so should do just, I. I should just like, really like, I'm, I'm going to maybe contradict myself on this one. Okay. Well, so does he. So <laughs> I think we should be granted that same amount of, uh, you know, leeway. Leash. Yeah. Leeway, you know? Um, well, I like to start here. So this was the first single from the album. And I think we have to sort of talk about the state of late 2000s rap briefly, you know? So like at this point, the South, it bulldozed through, you know? Oh yeah. Jeezy's out here. Soldier Boy's out here. You know, snap music wave TI, you know, but that's like early trap, not Soldier Boy, but like it sort of morphed into this more melodic, Auto tunes, and that was by way of T Pain and Kanye, you know, Jay Z's pal Wayne, you know, a lot of the southern artists, though. You know, T Pain's from what Florida, Tallahassee, I think. Yep, you know, Wayne being from New Orleans, um, and of course, some Atlanta people would come in with the, with the auto tune, and it's like we were starting to see this used. This was the auto tune era, it was becoming a thing, if you will. So yes. and much less notable names that we don't even discuss anymore, like Dricky Graham and stuff like that. Like, oh my god, I haven't heard that name in years. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, is it, he like the 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 evil like the the Drizzy, Drizzy Graham? Dr- Dricky yeah, Graham. Drizzy Graham. It's Dricky Graham. I, I'm not quite sure. I never figured him out. Is he tattoos and snapbacks or whatever? Nah, that's uh. I almost said Dizzy Rascal. My bad. Oh, um, come on. Yeah, no, no. Uh, not, ki- I'm not kidding. It's. Uh, kidding what is his though. name? He's, a, he's a kidding because, you know. I forgot, I forgot his name. I, I mean, I don't listen to him, so that's why I would forget. But Oh, is it like yeah. T. Wayne? Isn't it like T. Wayne or something? Or that was nah, it's, else? Uh, it's somebody else. I think. You're the voice uh, of the youth. You're supposed to know this. I'm not, I'm not supposed to know this. But yeah, there is a lot of auto-tune. 
Um, yeah, it's a lot. Of it. This was the this was the the wave. Um, no, snapbacks and tattoos was Dricky Graham. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. I know my shit. I'm the voice of the youth. You're the voice of the youth, and you got hip hop on your back. What do I got? I ain't got nothing. Well, I got hip hop subcontracted on my back right now. <laughs> All right, yeah. Shout out to Fiverr. Um, so yeah, so that's what's going on in 2009, late 2000s. So Jay is responding to this now. He's at this point. It's safe to say he's an elder statesman of hip hop. Did we? Did we ask him? response we did not we did not but he felt so obligated to address this so we got to look at it from that perspective he took it upon himself to make a grand statement about this new wave in hip-hop now i got some notes here it says notably to fit with the declarations on this track there is no auto tune at all in the blueprint three according to genius false again it's on so going to the next one granted it's to prove a point but it's still there there is auto tune on the blueprint three um there's also arguably auto tune on hate, but yeah, exactly. So, and apparently, what's funny is they wrote. Uh, well, they're not wrong here because there was an article, but Jay Z and Kanye had a quote great awakening to the evils of auto tune while making the album. They decided to dedicate a single to the cause and went back and erased all of the auto tune that they had already used. Uh, not true, but to that I said such lames. So you admit you had already used it; it was already slated for the album. Y'all was finna be old men. Don't front. Y'all was finna be old and washed and want to be with a new wave. And then all of a sudden you decided, nah, like, like, I t- take it off. I, I don't want to be like the youth. I'm, I'm Jay-Z. I'm a, you know, so, like you, so you were going to do it though. Kanye had like an awakening. And <laughs> after he already used auto-tune on 808s, ran with T-Pain shit on 808s. And now that he sees that Lil Wayne is burning up the charts with songs like Lollipop, it's like now it's de- oh now it's death of auto tune. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't death of auto tune uh, in November of two thousand eight when eight oh eights and heartbreaks came out, but now is death of auto tune because we got what we needed out of it, or I got what I needed out of it, so I'm fine leaving it to to rot now. So yeah, you know, and that's you know. kind of where my issue is with the song. Is that to me again? It's an it's an effort to undermine something that's beyond. Like you can't just call for the death of something and then that's going to be the death of something. You were and past your also, prime. Also, the the idea, and we'll get into this. The idea that all of and, and, and to his credit, he, it's not all of Auto Tune's contribution to hip hop. He's not all of it, but. Just this idea, though, still, it's sort of like this sweeping declaration, regardless of whatever you say. You know, it's like you don't take the time in the record to say, like, oh, such and such is cool. You do it off the record in, like, interviews. But it's like, well, again, what does that like, really count you know, for? Now, you know? now, I'll say that, like, to me, it feels like an effort to undermine something that you're being eclipsed by. You know, which is and very Jay-Z that and regard, Kanye move. Yeah, but but it's it's especially, you know, bullshit to me because of 808s. Like, oh, right. It, which you was, know, so it was all good a couple of months ago. But which was now, like the full adoption of auto tune, right? You know? And but now that Wayne is running off with the auto tune, you know, and you're talking about your T painting too much and whatnot. It's like, I don't know, man. Like the optics are bad. I don't care for the optics of it, basically. So. We'll just get to that straight away. Um, you know, well, as look, Mel likes to use worse. this word holistically, I don't care for this song holistically. It's a, uh, I don't like where, like where he's, where he's going with it really. And I don't think that quite frankly, he was good enough at the time to be making such declarations. Wayne was taking beats from his albums and rapping better over them. So to me, it's like, you know, you're talking about you t- painting too much, and it's like, yeah, Wayne was making like leaned out auto tune crooning songs, but he was also taking your beats and eating them. So, like, it's two things can be true at the same time. And now I'll also say, in terms of what I was referring to earlier, that there's going to be a lot of contradictions here. Maybe Jay was right. Let's, let's, there's a lot to lay out here. It gets worse. It also gets better. But 
So let me just, I'm going to try to speed through this. So Jay-Z said the anti-auto-tune screed was inspired by Kanye's suggestion that they collaborate on something hard to match the quality of the sample, which is In the Space by Janko Nilovic and Dave Sucky. Uh, <laughs> apparently, yet another inspiration for the song was Jay hearing auto-tune used in a Wendy's commercial. To which I say... <laughs> Okay, I can totally see JV. I'm like, I don't like this. Now my appetite is gone. You, you can't sing about the baconator. I mean, I mean, you can sing about it, but not like this. You know, like the irony of me liking this song is that it's peak old man Jay, and really he failed at the whole point of the song of like trying to kill auto tune. Yet, like you said, is he's kind of right. Like, you Maybe know, not it's at a, the time. Because at the, not time, at the time, I'm going to say this. He was wrong in 2009 because the, the purveyors of auto-tune at the time, T-Pain, by the way, can wrap his ass off if you don't yes. know. And he also uses rap. auto-tune as good as any. He's, the, he's, right. he's one of he's, the goats. Well, he's of one of the goats not of, auto-tune the goat of auto-tune in auto-tune. terms of using it as an instrument and not as Because he can actually sing. It's not a crutch for him. Right. It's not an artistic, as a crutch, but as an artistic flair. instrument. So right. T-Pain, to me... He does like, you know, auto tune, but also he can wrap his ass off. And also, right. like, you know, he's more so marketed as an R and B singer. So, what are we talking about? Rapper you know? turned singer. Now, yeah. Wayne is in two thousand nine. You know, he's he's still gonna drop. Like, No Ceilings isn't out yet in in September of oh nine. So Wayne's still like in contention as one of, if not the best rapper in the game. And mm-hmm. not only did he have his way with this beat, you know, but, and that says something in terms of like, I have something to, com- like someone else rapping on this beat to compare it to, but he does songs in auto tune. And Wayne is someone who like, I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is if you can actually rap, I don't care if you use auto tune, but if all you do is use auto tune, and you're one of these like sing rappers who you just make like the sing sing songy auto tune, you know, well, g- guitar. Well, laden now songs it's turned into its now. own thing. It's like melodic trap. Yeah, back then this is, that mo- wasn't. We didn't have the Uzis, the Thugs, right? Exactly. The uh, so, Trippy Reds, like. And that's not to say I know. don't enjoy music from Uzi, Thug, and Trippy Red, but like, and uh, by the way, I think Uzi and Thug can rap. So again, I, I haven't heard Trippy Red spit bars that I think are good, but like I think Uzi and and Thug, while they're not on like Wayne's level lyrically, you know, like I think that they can still rap. My my issue with the auto tune shit now in twenty twenty starts to come in when it's like I'm not hearing some of these guys actually rapping. All I'm hearing is the sing songy auto tune stuff, and at that point, it's like is this rap or is it R and B or like, is it, what, what are we dealing with here? Like I, I want to hear, I'm not saying no one, death of auto tune. Basically I'm not calling for death of auto tune, but I think in rap, you should only be using auto tune if you can also actually just rap. Okay. And that's fair, you know, but at the time that this came out, it was like a, it was like a get off my lawn classic, you know? Yeah, and I think it was premature. I think it was maybe, you know, not for nothing, maybe uh, seven, eight years premature. Yeah, and, like, the truth is, I'm not trying to kill auto-tune, but to a degree, I like listening to this old man try (laughs) to kill it, you know? And as far as what he said about his apparent duty to record this track, he said, in hip-hop, our job is, once the trend becomes a gimmick, to get rid of it. We've done that since the beginning of time. This isn't some newfangled thing. When people were wearing the black medallions, Ice Cube came along and said, get it out of here. When Hammer was selling 50,000 records, Q-Tip came and said, get it out of here. Then Biggie Smalls came and said, your life is played out like Kwame and the fucking polka dots. Get the polka dots out of here. It's just a part of hip hop. So I guess in Jay's mind, he's very hip hop in making this record. You know? But you can spin anything if you but really he want doesn't, to. Now that I'll get to the lyrics now, I don't think Jade kills auto tune. 
Well, like I said, he kind of fails at that. Right. And and there's a lot know, of in this song, and this is why I give it a six minus. I'll just get this out of the way. I'm really a big fan of the beat. Beat's definitely in my wheelhouse of these like kind of like drunken, jazzy, like 1940s, 1950s sounding sort of samples. It's one of the hardest beats of the 2000s to me. I'm a big fan right. of this beat. Like it knows when to let the jazzy shit ride out. And then it knows when to get the down, it's, it's really a perfect beat. Yeah. It, it, it scratches the itch that I look for when I hear sample based beats. Um, so, you know, absolutely no qualms with this beat whatsoever. I give the beat like a nine. I gotta say the beat is just the beats. Great. The beat and that's is, why for years I thought I liked this song more than I actually do. I thought I disliked you know? it more than I actually do. But the fact of the matter is this. Yes, Lil Wayne to me is the definitive DOA. But the beat is so good. It Even if like the rhymes to me are not delivering, as long as the rhymes aren't terrible, it's sitting in, in the six territory because of how much I like the beat. Um... Jay, I mean, on the hook, he's really irritating with the na 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 shit. That's just obnoxious. Not a fan. Um, but my issue with the verses more so is like, number one, I don't think he, I don't think he managed to kill auto tune off. I don't think he made a strong enough case. Like I said, maybe this was a premature record. But at the same token, there's a way that he approaches the beat with like this very basic delivery where it's like this song might need a verse from Jeezy. I might send it to the mixtape Wheezy, you know, is this, this the song beginning of the, I might era. I might do this. always threatening to do, I might do this. I might, yeah, do that. I might, I might wear black for a week straight. I might bring back Versace shades. I might do this. I might do that. This needs this. This needs that. It's just, I'm not a fan of how he approached the song. It's not bad. <laughs> I'm just not a fan of how he approached it. I don't think that we get top tier J on a beat that's really a home run. I expect him on a beat like this to not fuck things up, not get in the way of the beat. And to me, he does. Listen, Stephen A. Smith voice. Let's be clear. Without this production, the song does not stand. Okay, it doesn't. It's just the beat. Without this beat, everything he's talking on here, this will probably be a six for me. You know, and the truth is like, let's break this down. Like, let's let's try to get through this. First one, this is anti-auto tune, death of the ringtone. The same for iTunes, the same for sing alongs. All right, I'm gonna stop you right there. It's not iTunes' fault. Like, we blaming distributors now. I know what he means. To put it in modern terms, it's like saying this ain't for TikTok, this ain't for playlists. But what he's saying with his this ain't for iTunes is like saying this ain't for Spotify. And like, how much sense does that make? You know, all music goes on there. Then again, Spotify messed up the game. Mixed but also, dead, it is for music, iTunes. Free music dead. That's where most people are going to be buying this song off of. Right. So Jay-Z, he's already just saying nonsense. Um, you know, This is Sinatra at the Opera, Bring a Blonde, preferably. No, that's not. Ass. Sinatra at the Opera, song. Bring a Blonde was thank you. It was uh, right. earlier. Like, well, how was this Sinatra at the Opera? I, I, like what you know and then he goes on like wrong this ain't politically correct uh this might offend my political connects my raps don't have melodies this should make niggas want to go and commit felonies all right so in addition to you continuing to remind us that you're clouded up you know with all these political connects which just reads as you being old and corporate now you just said ain't nothing cool about being violent and committing felonies in what we talking about so what is it is it uchi wally or one mike jay you wow. know what are we doing Wow, you know, Mel, what are we doing? Mel, Mel hasn't disliked a song yet, but he's certainly getting his criticisms in, folks. Well, I, 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 I gotta be honest. So you know, and then he continues. I know we're facing a recession, but the music y'all making go make it the Great Depression. So all your lack of aggression. So corny, pull your bro. skirt back down, grow a set, man. It's like, all right, listen. Like, <sighs> how can you buy into this? He's not even first doing of a all. How job. are we facing a recession? When this is the stuff that's selling, this is the stuff that's keeping the economy afloat, this auto-tune music. People weren't depressed either. I mean, I was at the time. I was a very depressed youth. But I saw the people. They were lit. 
Those idiots were enjoying themselves. So the music they were making wasn't going to make the Great Depression. People love his auto-tune stuff. And then he tops it all up with his toxic masculinity, if you will. Oh, my He's God. Why do we have to be aggressive? Now, this is the Listen, now, Jay... To, to, he's basically talking about small penis rap. Right. You know? So if you want, like I said earlier, if like we said, you want to know what that means, search it up. Small penis rap, rap ranking, SoundCloud. We talk about what that entails. But it's like just all this mixed messaging, you know, continues verse two. You know, this ain't a number one record. This is practically assault with a deadly weapon. Like, it, it's not all that, Jay. Like, You're it's really not a very violent it. record. When he's talking about, let's get violent, this is definitely, why do this we have to get violent? I don't think violence when I hear this. Do you think that, you know, do you think the beat's that, hard, like, but I don't want to like attack people to this. Especially in 2009, you think anyone was going to die over autotune? Like, the, that this is, <laughs> this is, you know, like going to cause violence in the streets or something? Like, yeah, you know, it's just I don't know. This it's is like, assault I, with a deadly weapon. You haven't said is you it? haven't specifically outlined what's wrong with auto tune yet. <laughs> but he tries to he gets he's trying to like draw the line in the sand, which is what he would say. I'll I'll get back to that. But like, you know, I like the whole like I made this just for flexing, Mr. C, I want niggas to feel threatened. Like, okay, okay, you're stating like the kind of music you're trying to make. You know, of course, and then we go more biggie, Amaja, stop your blood clot crying, the kid, the dog, everybody dying, no lying. Then he gets into more old man Jay. Your niggas jeans too tight, your colors too bright, your voice too light. Then Kanye comes in, that's too far, nigga. Like because Kanye is one of the purveyors of wearing tight clothes and pastel and all that, you know? Right. Um, don't don't act like you weren't out in Paris with freaking Fonsworth and all those other dudes dressed right. up like God knows what. I don't even know right. what to describe that as. You know, a, cal- and, a cavalry from the 17th century. There are pictures out there. Look up like you know, Kanye they made fun of it on South Park, man. Like, you know, it was iconic, yeah. iconically bad. Those outfits. <laughs> Well, he birthed a whole generation of fashion kids, so yeah, and uh, you know, they love yeah. this stuff. Those um, fashion but, kids are now fascist kids, you know. But of course, Kanye was the guy who encouraged Jay because you know Kanye's trying to bury the people who are running off with the 808s after he tried to run off with the 808s that he pretty much took a cue from t- from T Pain with. So you know. You know, just like, you know, Ye told me to kill y'all to keep it 100, all that. This ain't for Z100, it's for Hot 97, this shit for for Clue, for Khaled, for We The Best Stand. It's like, okay, all right. Hot 97 was playing so much auto-tune shit in 09, so I don't know what he's talking about. You know, so verse three, like you were saying, you know, this need a verse from Jeezy. I might send this to the mixtape Wheezy, acknowledging that Wayne is on fire at this point. You know, but right. Wayne and also uses auto-tune. There's a difference between, but also, you know, somewhat backhanded compliment because it's like, you know... He he murders beats on mixtapes, but the albums ain't much. Right. That's what it sounds like to me, because it's like, we don't want to send this to album, Wheezy. Right. You know, like, and then, of course, this part, you niggas singing too much. Get back to rap, you T-painting too much. Uh, throwing, again, backhanded. Because here's the thing. under the bus again. We'll under the bus. This and here's what's funny. Like I said, you know, and he acknowledges off the record. So he said in to Funk Master Flex and Mr. C on Hot 97, he said that in the song, he's taking aim at artists who use autotune as a crutch. He went on to elaborate that he was who he was not getting at. So he said, the guys who did it, did it great. T-Pain, he does great melodies. If you listen to Kanye, great melodies. If you listen to Say You Will, A Heart was great melodies. Lil Wayne Lollipop was a fantastic melody. Everybody can't do it. Let them guys do it. They got their little niche. Let's move on. That's just my opinion. I don't know if everybody feels the same way. It's like, well, if you're saying that off the record, that's not what you're saying on the record. You just make it sound like Album Wayne sucks and T-Pain should be thrown under the bus. You don't right, say all that on the song. So what are we forced to believe unless we've heard this interview? I thought you, you talked to Kanye and you guys aren't going to do auto-tune. You got rid of every... You had an awakening. So why, why are you giving Kanye a pass to use it if you told him he said he was going to stop using it himself? Listen, th- right. You know, and apparently... He concluded that, you know, his intention, of course, like he was saying earlier, what you do in hip hop, you kill a trend with. He said he's drawing a line in the sand. That's not what it feels like. Like, like I think really in this regard, he's partially responsible. I guess he succeeded in drawing a line in the sand because he kind of threw gasoline on this never ending war between backpackers and like lit boys, you know, but 
it's not a literal, it's not a death of auto tune. Auto tune just got bigger and bigger and bigger, you know. And if you call the song "Death of Auto Tune," this is your own fault. So I had to think well, you failed at Jay. that. Like Jay was always a trendsetter. Jay was always able to influence trends, and you know, Kanye would go on to do the same thing, influence the way people dress and things yeah. like that. So, like you know, Jay was very influential. He really was, and he didn't manage to state his case here on this one he wastes a he lot doesn't, of time he does draw a line in the sand if that's what he wanted but he doesn't kill autotune no and the reason he doesn't is because he doesn't lay out a reason why it needs to die his only argument is like your clothes are too bright you're not aggressive enough like who says that that is a necessity you know, if you're going to say that, then you need to explain why aggression is vital to hip hop. And I need why to wearing know why, baggy why, clothes is vital right, to hip hop. I need to know why certain songs like why Young Violence Forever is, are on this album. Right. If that's the case. <laughs> like, what are we doing? You bring in the Empire of the Sun guy. You know, you bring in Mr. Hudson. Just contradiction. So I just want to blaze through this part real quick. So, like, you know, the whole the whole thing here. So, no ID said, as far as how this whole thing came together. He says, it's a pretty known story. They were working in Hawaii. They got into a big argument about the direction of the album. No ID wanted it to sound one way. Jay wanted it to sound another way. So we started arguing back and forth. And then a Soulja Boy song came on where he was using auto-tune. And he said, Jay's facial expression just turned to, what? And he says... I had that idea. He pulled up the track. Jay liked it and knew exactly what to do. I could tell something serious was going through his head. So early the next morning, young guru calls him super early and says, yo, get over here right now. You got to hear this. No ID is like, cool. I'm about to go play basketball and then I'll be through. I know it's crazy. It's Jay. I expect something crazy, but I'll be there later. Guru was like, no, you don't understand. Come right now. So he went over there immediately, heard how crazy it was. And he said his first reaction was like, I hope Kanye don't get mad. So Jay looks at him and says, yo, we're reacting. You don't know what this is? I was like, yeah, but, and then Jay was like, yeah, he told me to do it. Then Kanye came in and said, damn, Jay, you went too far. And no ID stopped him and said, you got to put that on the record. And then, of course, Kanye ended up on the, it's too far, nigga. So he hopped on a plane. He left Hawaii while he was in the air, apparently. Um, You know, Flex premiered it on Hot 97, ran it back, dropped the bombs, all that. He came off the plane to text and emails, he says. And it was one of his favorite hip hop moments he's ever been involved in in his life. It was priceless. Jay later called to congratulate him on his Grammy. And what a lot of people don't know is that even if you win in certain categories, you don't get a physical Grammy. Uh, that he won for, you know, Run This Town, won him a physical Grammy, even though both records won, DOA and this. But Jay said the DOA Grammy was the one that was more important because it wasn't a real single. It wasn't a commercial record with a hook. It was a hard record, and that makes it an accomplishment. So, you know, <laughs> Jay's whole approach to this is like that this is real hip-hop, but it's a complete contradiction because the guy who told you to do it helped push auto tune to the point it is today and then later on you got soft records like empire state of mind you got yes, and young forever that, you, you not know only that but this is supposed to appeal to people like me this is supposed to be the dusty boom bap record that the people who have hip-hop on their back were supposed to love this but i don't <laughs> think jay made a compelling argument for the death of auto tune and yeah. i don't think that this is You know, like, it's not a commercial record, but it's also, to me, not, like, I don't think it belongs in the pantheon of, like, classic hip-hop records or, like, street singles And I know the Dusties, they loved it. They were like, yo, Jay, he's sticking it to these Oh, they love this record. Yeah, they love it. Of course they did. You know what it is? They love it more in sentiment because it's like, oh, finally someone's speaking out again. You know, this is before they were calling people mumble rappers, (laughs) but, like. Unfortunately, I think it was a situation where they might have been winding. Like, we want to say, like, oh, they love it in sentiment, but did they really like the record? Apparently, they did. They were playing this. They really liked this DOA, you know? And eventually, I came to realize, because I, I never wanted to kill Auto yeah, Why do you Auto-Tune. like Death of I was Auto-Tune, 16 at the time. And, you're, and you, you are know? such a Lil Wayne fan, so you have a version of this song where there's much better rapping from an Auto Tune man. So, what's going on? You know? And it's just like on the same record too. You're doing the interpolation of the themes and nah 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 nah. Like you know, like you ref- he's referring to one of the softest Kanye records of all time. No ID, tracking out a story. That was Big Brother of Graduation. 
<laughs> like it's just there's so much happening in this record and it's just <sighs> final contradiction I don't be in a project hallway talking about how I'll be in the projects all day. That sounds stupid to me. If you a gangster, this is how you prove it to me. Niggas just get violent. This is death of auto-tune, moment of silence. Such confusing messaging. You want people to get dressed up and go to the White House with you on track one. Now, like, you got to be a gangster and prove it to them. And, but yet, don't be in the projects all day. It's just... And yet you you're, ask not, you're, you're not even you're not even taking on a quote unquote gangsta attitude on like 75, 80 percent of the records on this album. So what are you talking about? This is how I like to end, you know, because what are right? What are you talking about? You got to ask yourself, why was this made? The answer I'm forced to arrive at taking everything into account. Why was it made? Insecurity. Because here's the thing, and we talked about this a bit off air. Right, who said rap had to be any one way? Let's think about what it started as. Sir, they weren't singing necessarily unless you went hip, hop, a hippie, a hippie. That's a little melodic, but it was party music. It wasn't, nigga, let's get violent. It wasn't barring out. It wasn't any of that. It was what, was, what were like the pillars of hip hop, you know, graffiti, beats, and rhymes, and whatever. Yeah, you know, uh, you know break dancing, graffiti. Right, break uh, dancing, you know. DJing, you know. And, and of course, right. Class, those were the pillars. And things change. I'm not saying for the better, not for the worse, but that's what things do. They change, you know. And with that said, Jay, just do what you want to do. Don't worry about them, right? Like, you're rich, you have political connects. You already admit it, you don't even need to do albums anymore. I understand feeling protective of the culture, like you said, you know, and, and trends and making sure, you know, they don't run amok. You feel like it's being corrupted, but no one's forcing you to make that music, you know, and is, is, I guess, non-auto-tune rap less lucrative now? Sure. Sorry, but you know what happens with culture? It's cyclical. Things will come back. I mean, because look, Griselda is getting talked about now. Yeah, you know, totally. and they're rapper rappers. So just relax. You know, Drake, one of the most singingest rappers, he drops his like bar out records every year. Cole right. and Kendrick, they, they figured like out how to infuse but... melody without sacrificing content. So like, just relax, you know, <laughs> like relax. It'll be OK, Jay. But and as a I think you're just arms, I just don't think he achieves what he's set out to do on here. Yeah. That said, the beat is, is just so fantastic. I can only, uh, as I can, I, I don't really like DOA, but the worst I can say about it is six minus. I know, you know it sounds like I should be giving this a six, but the beat, the beat is that hard. And when he starts talking about, he fails at making a case as to why auto tune should die. But when he starts describing the kind of record he wants to hear, I'm on board. Like, you know, this ain't for Z100. This is for this. This is for that. I don't that. like it. It's too repetitious. It's, I don't want, I, I just don't want to hear him talk about, I should do this. I should do that. Get this person to do this for me. Get this telling person to do that Telling people what to do. Me. Exactly. Jay's really telling people what to do at this point. Folks, if you want to run down, this is a thing. Okay. This is a thing. Again, go on SoundCloud, excerpts, look for it. It's a list of Jay-Z telling people what to do. And it's you been know, added on to this season for sure. Oh, for sure. So that's all I got to say about DOA. Long discussion, but it had to be had because auto-tune has taken over hip-hop. Yeah. So we're still dealing with it. You failed at at the death of auto-tune, but the beat's hard and you had some moments. (laughs) So seven plus for me, six minus for you. Um, Yeah. Sometimes you have to realize I, I do like listening to it even though i don't agree with all of his assertions if i like listening to something i like listening to it you know i'm just listening to so, no ceilings no oh, well, that's great but uh you want to move on please okay yo it's mel from rap rankings to hear the full episode this clip comes from and all the other episodes stop by raprankings.com or search rap rankings on your favorite podcast platform